32-year-old Miles Sanderson was taken into custody late this afternoon. Police say he went into medical distress sometime after that. He had evaded capture since Sunday when the bodies of 10 people were found in James Smith Cree Nation. Now, Sanderson was apprehended on a highway near Roster in Saskatchewan. That's just over an hour south of James Smith Cree Nation. Olivia Stefanovic is at that very scene on the highway where the arrest unfolded. So, Olivia, we've heard from the RCMP tonight. What is the latest? Well, the latest, Adrian, is that RCMP confirmed that Miles Sanderson, the suspect who's been on the run, wanted by police since the massacre on Sunday, is dead. There are still so many questions about what happened and how he died, but we can tell you that this is where his manhunt ended. Just behind me is the vehicle, his getaway vehicle, that he stole from a community nearby called Waka, Saskatchewan, just east of here. And you can might be able to see some officers who are still searching that vehicle tonight. He, there was a, a long search that unfolded this afternoon, and this is where it all concluded, Adrian. Let's take a listen to how the RCMP describe what happened next. Shortly after his arrest, he went into medical distress. Nearby, EMS were called by police to attend the scene, and he was transported to a hospital in Saskatoon. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. The Saskatchewan RCMP has requested the Saskatoon Police Service and the Saskatchewan Incident Response Team to conduct the independent external investigation into circumstances surrounding the incident. Now, Adrian, people in Saskatchewan got another emergency alert on their phones this afternoon, just after two o'clock, telling them that an individual with a knife was sighted in a stolen vehicle. That was Miles Sanderson, RCMP confirmed. And there were about 20 sightings of him in this whole area, which was under lockdown before all of this came to a dramatic end earlier this afternoon. And Adrian, it, members of that, it, you know, the independent investigation, which will take place now, are already at the scene looking through my Miles Anderson's uh, Sanderson's rather vehicle. So Olivia, from the folks who are there who you've been talking to, how are people reacting mm -hmm. to these developments? Well, there is a big sigh of relief for the fact that uh, Miles Sanderson has been located, but because they are now learning that he's he's dead, uh, there is a bit of disappointment, Adrian, from some First Nations leaders, especially who want answers, wanted to hear directly from him about why he did all this. And this is something that the RCMP also acknowledged. We're still putting together the parts of the investigation that will speak to um, Damien's uh, cause of death and um, you know, there are aspects um, with Miles being deceased that we may not know uh, how some things unfolded. But at least Adrian people and James Smith Cree Nation, which has been hit so hard by all of this, so many family members affected, they can now feel safe enough to unlock their doors, hug each other, grieve together and start the healing journey. All right, Olivia Stefanovic. Uh, thank you very much, Olivia. You're welcome. Now, today the RCMP released the identities of 10 victims of Sunday's massacre, from young adults to senior citizens, mothers, grandmothers, sons and daughters, among them a Canadian Forces veteran and a community first responder who died trying to protect others who were in harm's way. Now, even before the manhunt ended, vigils for the victims had been planned for this evening. Sam Sampson joins us from one of those vigils at the First Nations University of Canada in Regina as this latest news of Miles Sanderson comes in. So, Sam, what are you hearing? Well, right now, Adrian, we're actually in a moment of silence, so that's why I'm going to speak a little low here. Um, but this vigil has been going on for about an hour and a half now, and even though we are a few, about three hours from where the stabbings happened in James Smith Cree Nation, the emotions here uh, are very high. It's that empathy that one feels, right? Because we we are um, we have a teaching of uh, Wakotuin amongst our people, and uh, Wakotuin talks about the kinship and the interrelatedness and the connection of people. Um, so, when something like that, when some big event like that happens, a drama, or even if it's something like to celebrate, um, we're all affected by it as First Nations people because of that. That, um, that belief in that interconnection between all of us, the relationship that exists amongst us. So for the healing aspect of it, it would, it would be like a, 
um, like a holistic uh, kind of healing where we'd all come together. Now, part of the conversation happening here tonight as well is uh, addressing alcohol and drugs uh, in First Nations communities. Miles Sanderson, according to court documents, did have a history with drugs and violence, and so leaders say this is a big moment. I'm relieved that he's been caught, uh, but, but right now I'm feeling such a sense of, of remorse and, 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 and real sorrow for uh, the sense of loss that uh, James McCree Nation, it's... Uh, communities are going through right now. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of questions as to why, uh, but we all know that uh, in Indigenous communities uh, and in communities right across the country, we're dealing with a, a real problem of, of drugs and alcohol and addictions. And uh, this is a rally call, I think, for Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities to come together and say enough is enough. There are about 100 people here tonight, maybe just over, and so vigils like this are just the start of the grieving process for so many. Adrian?